Hello everybody, this is Drew Naylor, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Microsoft's CBL Mariner. But first, I need to build it, because there are no pre-built ISO images. So, um, what we'll have to do is, I'm running Linux Mint 20.2, but I hope this will work. This is a virtual machine, and I have snapshots, so I'm just going to copy these into here from the build requirements. I wouldn't recommend doing this on a real computer, but it's fine on a virtual machine, so we just copy and paste these into here. Plus I have, um, well like I said, I don't know if I said this earlier, but I have snapshots. So I'm just going to just copy all these into here. And uh, the resulting ISO image, I'm going to be posting on, um, Okay, I'm going to be using Python 2 minimal. Hopefully this will work. Um, since it's in a virtual machine, I I have snapshots of the of it from before in case this all goes wrong and I need to do it again. But I'll be posting the the resulting ISO image on my on a GitHub releases page, so you can download it if you want to. Uh, what C I might as well, while this is downloading, I might as well explain what CBL Mariner is. CBL Mariner is Microsoft's, uh, it's an, as it says here, it's an internal Linux distribution for Microsoft's cloud infrastructure and edge project products and services. Uh, it provides, I don't know where it explains this, I think it says it on Wikipedia, but it, uh, explains it talks about WSL right here. The CBL Mariner is actually what provides the graphical capabilities for uh, running Linux applications inside WSL. CBL Mariner is really not a general purpose distro that you would use day to day in your day to day life, but it's a, lin a Microsoft Linux distribution and you can build and install it. So I'm just going to let these install. Oh, I think it's almost done. Yeah, it's almost done. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to go back here. Uh, I installed all that stuff. I'm going to now install PigZ for faster compression operations because this is a virtual machine and it needs all the help in, it can get. And I don't want to waste too much time. So now we have to fix the go 1.15 link. Okay, now we need to install Docker. I hope this will work. If it doesn't, then that's a problem. Oh, okay. Oh, it just downloaded that. Now we run this. And now it's installing Docker. How much space do I have? Oops, sorry about that. Uh, 17.7 gigabytes. Hopefully that's enough. I'll just let this run and speed it up. Oh, it's done already. That was not long. Okay, what's this up here? Oh, why can't I scroll that? There. I... Why, why is it not scrolling sometimes? That's weird. Okay, so it's... Oh, it's showing the version of Docker that's installed. Um... Okay. I don't really care because I have no idea how to use Docker but apparently you have to do this. Oh we have to log out and log back in. Let me add this quick start guide to my favorites. So now that's in the favorites. Ah, there. That's good. Okay now I'm gonna log out and log back in. Okay so now that that's done we need to open Firefox back up. So now whoop, Oh, it's a minimal Linux for use in containers and on edge devices. That's more uh, detailed information. So this Tech Republic thing here says it's an ideal tool for this, providing only the minimum services required to support the components of WSLG, which is the graphics. X Wayland, Weston, Pulse Audio, and Free RDP. So it uses Wayland apparently. So this is the quick start guide. Oh, I need to open the terminal back up. I'm not used to how um, 
Cinnamon's window manager handles that. So I'm just gonna clone this. I'll wait until it's done, or I'll speed it up until it's done. Okay, now it's done. And we can just CD into the directory, change directory, copy, paste, enter. And now we need to check out the 1.0 stable um, tag. So now we, we're not building and booting a VHD or VHD, VHDX or VHD image. We're going to do an ISO image instead because that's easier because then we can go through the installer and you or whoever wants to can um, install this themselves in hopefully a virtual machine but I, I guess you would be able to do it on a real computer but I don't know why you would want to do that because it's very it's very um, small limited there's a very small number of uh, packages on it so it's I would assume that it's really limited and there isn't much to do now to talk about why I decided to do this video um, I, I looked up on YouTube and there were a few videos about using CBL Mariner, but they didn't, uh, real, they didn't have audio in the one, most of them didn't have audio or a, a voiceover in the ones that did. The, um, the microphone wasn't very good quality, not to, not to bash anyone for their microphones, but just. It wasn't very, I didn't really like listening to it. So hopefully this will provide a nicely, a nice sounding voiceover. Um, while doing all this stuff. Uh, so um, CBL Mariner actually uses, it actually uses Fedora. Let me go down here. Uh, acknowledgements. Yeah, so it's it use, does something with um, VMware's Photon project, Photon OS, I mean, and then it, it does something with Fedora. And Microsoft actually acknowledges GNU and the Free Software Foundation, which is surprising. They also acknowledge a Linux from scratch and Open Mamba for stuff. Very interesting. So I'm just going to let this all download and then, actually I'm going to check the storage, how much storage I have left. 16.1 gigabytes, okay that's not bad. I'm just going to let this run and then get back, and then get back to it when it's done. I'm going to speed it up and then get back. Oh, actually, uh, we are building the IS. Well, no, we're downloading the RPMs right now, but um, we're going to be building the ISO right now. That's what we're doing right now. And then after this is done, then I'm going to copy the ISO image to the main, uh, to the host machine. And then I already have a virtual machine ready, so I'm going to just put it into there and then start it. Oh, now it's adding worker or adding the RPM to the worker CH root. It was adding all these RPMs to the worker CH root and now it's done installing all the packages. Oh, it's um, is it building now? I think it's building it now. Creating cloning environment to populate. You know, oh. Oh yeah, it's cloning stuff. You know how, um, how you, what's this? Oh, okay, it's mounting stuff, I see. You know how you clone things, usually? You take split vertical soft from the Rayhan FX Windows Movie Maker package, and then you put one video on one side, another video on the other side, put that transition in the middle, and then slide them over each other, and then you get 
a clone of yourself. You just have to stay out of the very middle, and then somewhere, and then a part around the middle. Otherwise, you'll fade out. Of course, you could also use I don't know. I don't remember what it's called. What effect it's called in Adobe Premiere Pro, but there's another one that's very much like it. But it's instead of being a, a fade, it's just right down the middle. It's it's just as a configurable feathering fade, and you can configure how much of that you have between two videos. So if you want to, you can just have it split right down the middle, and then have a video where you're cloning yourself. 13.2 gigabytes free. This I hope this will be enough. Oh, now it's doing stuff. I was gonna open HTOP, but it's it's doing things now. So that's cool. How much do I have? 13.1 gigabytes. Yeah, now it's, I think, doing the build. I'm gonna open system monitor and look at resources. I gave this, oh, I, I gave this virtual machine 12 CPU threads and uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, so hopefully this um, takes advantage of that. I don't know if it will, but I mean, it's going to be available to it. So I just want to. I just want. Oh, that's a lot of different threads going there. I just want to make sure that it has as much, as many resources available to it as possible. Oh, it's uh, creating the root FS. Oh, it's building it. Yeah, it's uh, there's root FS is including a kernel. It's doing stuff. Oh yeah, that's a lot of threads. Wow. Okay. Oh, it's almost done. Maybe I hope. Oh yep. I think it's almost done. Oh, it did the bootloader. Oh, it's almost done. Size of boot image. Okay, it's doing the boot image. Almost. Oh yeah, I used all the threads, I think, right there. Almost done. I can't wait to install this to see what it is. Ah, uh, it's done! Okay. It's already done. So 677 megabytes. Okay, so um now is that it? Yeah, that's it. Now we have to put it into the host into the other virtual machine. So I'm gonna do that and then get back when I'm done. Actually I guess I can show this. Um hide uh don't show hidden files. Okay. CBL Mariner, it's right in here and out. Images full? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, I think I think this is it. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this to my host machine and then I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm back and I'm going to start the virtual machine with CBL Mariner in it. I have never, I don't think I've seen this Yes, I know, Vir VMware. Thank you. Okay. Please. I hope that'll go away. Okay, good. I don't think I've seen this operating system before. I mean, like, in the... There are videos of it, like I said before. But I don't know if those are actual videos of it or if it was just people using their computer if I because I just kind of skipped around I didn't really want to see the actual operating system so I don't really know anything I hope this will work I hope this is doing what it's supposed to. I don't know for sure though. Oh, 
There we go. Okay. Ah, I see. Oh, terminal, you can... S oh, this is definitely a Microsoft operating system because you can see here at the top it has that gray bar and a gray bar at the bottom and then a menu right in the middle. I don't know if this is because of Microsoft. I don't know if this is Microsoft's installer or uh, if it's another installer that they use, but it, it definitely, if it's theirs, this is definitely a Microsoft DOS early NT 9X era operating system, it feels like anyway. So they've got a terminal installer right here with speech enabled. Terminal installer, I assume without speech enabled because it doesn't say that. And graphical installer, let's use the graphical installer. Oh, okay. Whoa, that is a very uh, tilted uh, mouse pointer. So we've got, oh, we've got different installation types. SKU, stock keeping units. That's so weird to think about Linux distros with stock keeping units. I'll make this bigger. Hang on. Oh, uh, well, we can't change it right here. But once it's installed, I'll change it. So installation type. Let's go with full. Next. Simple GUI installer end user license agreement. Um, okay, thanks. Yes, I accept the terms and conditions above that don't exist. Fortunately, because this is a Linux distribution that you can compile from source, uh, I would hope that there aren't terms and conditions. Okay, so we're just going to install it on there. Oh, wow, okay. Ah, I see they're taking the Windows 10 route for randomizing stuff. Let's just do that. Dash V uh, M user since Okay. Ah. Enough. Password. Okay, um. CBL Mariner. I hope that works. One. CBL. Sorry about that. CBL Mariner 1. Ah, okay. I just... Please install now. Okay. Okay, so please, ins please install now with everything capitalized. Like, every... The beginning of every word capitalized, and then an exclamation point at the end. Yes. I do like their image right here, it's very nice. I'll just let this run. I, I mean, it's really close to being done, but I'll speed it up if necessary. Oh, it's all it's already done. Installation took 36 seconds. That's that's way faster than Windows. So now it's booting up CBL Mariner. All right, let's see what it is. Oh, it's Do I have to Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so it appears that there's nothing 
visual. Oh, I typed it wrong. Okay, so I think I'm going to end this video here. In the next part, I'm going to actually try to explore this more. So, um, please stay tuned for that one, and, uh, goodbye for now.